Hey guys, it's Scott from Axel Boy, talking through our uh, trail repair series here. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is trail tire repairs. This is something we all hate. We don't like changing tires. We're off-road, we're, we're off-camber, we're leaning, we've got rocks everywhere. We're trying to stick some shaky high lift jack or some little bottle jack under there to change the tire. We've got some products that are going to help with that, keep you a little bit safer, and get you back to a safe area where you can change your tire. Now guys, I want to be really open about this. Some of these repairs that we're going to look at, these are not DOT approved repairs. These are not permanent repairs. These are get you out of the middle of nowhere to get you someplace where you can safely fix it. Um, the only piece of this that's safe to use on the road is going to be these valve stems. The rest of them should not be used for passenger vehicles being used on a highway. This is just to get you out of the trail, okay? Um, so a couple things I want to talk about. One of the first things that we see a lot of is we see valve stems get ripped out. You're in a little rock garden or up against a tree stump, you turn the tire, you pass through, tree branch gets out there, rips off your rubber valve stem, what are you going to do? You got to jack it up, you got to try to change the tire. Um, or you use one of our favorite things, which you should have in everything that you own. You should have it like in your wife's car, your Jeep, your truck, your Toyota, your lawnmower, and that's the Kobe emergency uh, tire valve and what this is is this is a valve stem that can be put in from the outside of the uh, wheel without uh, removing the tire without removing the weight off the vehicle or anything really nice system this is how it works we've got this really nice brass uh, valve stem and what we do is we pull our old valve stem out and then we just push this in. Now this one works on all of your standard uh, 458,000 thick valve stems, most passenger vehicles and light trucks. Um, once we're in there, we use this little finger nut here, little toggle nut. And as this goes, it expands the seal, kind of bell mouthed it a little bit to where it locks into the wheel. Then we can just air it back up and go. We don't have to try to pull it through from the inside um, like we do with a standard valve stem. So we don't need to dismount the tire. Now this is safe. This can be used on the road. Um, I the, These ones that have the, the wing nut on them, I like to think of those as emergency valves. To me, they're temporary. You undo it, you pull it back out, you put a valve stem back in it when you're back home and you're safe. Um, but if you're in the middle of the woods and you don't want to jack it up and you don't want to take all that time, this will get you back on the road. Uh, same company makes some different valve stems too that that use more hex nuts and are a little more versatile for for daily use. Uh, they've got the standard valve stem, and same thing goes in from the outside. You can use a nut and a socket to tighten that down. And then they've got what they call the ultimate valve stem, which is real short and stubby, and that eliminates it from uh, from getting uh, or makes it harder for it to get torn off when you're on the trail. Now, guys. I'm not the biggest fan of a rigid valve stem on a trail. I like to run a soft rubber valve stem because if you hit uh, a tree or something, usually the valve stem will just flex out of the way and pop back, no problem. As they get older, or depending on how hard you hit it, you'll snap it off. Whereas if you rub a brass valve stem up against a rock, you're going to break it. It's not going to spring back. So I don't particularly like these off-road, but the choice is up to you. I know a lot of guys like these little short ones, and they work great. They've also got the extra large for your Ram 4500s and your uh, uh, one and a half ton trucks, your tractors, and different equipment. Um, these are great. These are legal to use on the road. These are safe to use on the road. The rest of the stuff that we're going to talk about is not. These are off-road repairs only. Um, tire plugs. You should always have a tire plug kit. Um, we've got a couple of tools. We've got a reamer. We've got a, the needle rubber cement, and a couple of rope style plugs. Um, these are great for small cuts, uh, any you know punctures and small things like that. You can, in an emergency, stitch some of them together and try to repair a sidewall temporarily. Um, but better yet, there's a new product that just came out uh, called the Sidewall Slug. And to be honest, we haven't tried this yet. Today's gonna be the first time we're gonna try this. I sure could have used it last weekend when I was in Hot Springs, Arkansas and cut my sidewall, had to limp it back with like 10 tire plugs jammed in it. This is a new product, it's relatively simple, 
This is definitely not something you're going to go down the highway with. This is just something that's going to get you back to your trailer or back to camp. This is how this thing works. You want to screw this nut. You go to your sidewall cut and you stick the carriage bolt through. And then you turn the inner slug that way and you push it through your tire and then you pull your rope and your little plastic guide and you pull it up against the tire push down the outer and then you tighten up the nut sandwich it on there and you take a pair of wire cutters cut off the excess get you back on the trail in one piece and uh, they'll hold pressure for days continue out your day wheeling um, again this is not going to be for the road so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over and we're going to demonstrate how some of these things are used uh, so you know real world applications. All right guys, we're going to demonstrate how the sidewall slug works. Um, this is actually uh, real damage that we got out at Hot Springs uh, a weekend ago and uh, got up against a rock and we cut the sidewall, great big hole and put your whole finger in it. Um, we did not have this, so at the time we stuck five or six tire plugs in there, did the best we could to get off the trail. You guys know that I do carry a spare. I talk about that all the time, how important that is. But there's nothing that sucks worse than trying to get out a high lift jack and, 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 and try to balance this thing on some crazy rocks um, out in the middle of the trail. This way, we can get it safely back. So, sidewall slug is a really new device. Um, this is designed to make temporary sidewall repairs, get you off the trail, get you back to safety. Um, I've never used one, so this is uh, new for both of us, right? Um, here's how this is going to work. We're going to undo this nut. And then we're going to slide this apart. And we've got a carriage bolt here. And what we're going to do is we're going to push that carriage bolt down into the damage. Into the hole. Like such. Once we've got that down in there, then we're going to take the inner slug. And we push the inner slug down through, through the hole. Okay. Now we want to make sure that we have the inner and the outer lined up right. And we can do that with this little plastic tab. We make sure that we're running the right distance. Our cut goes this way. So we want to make sure that our sidewall slug is set up that way. Now, we need to fish our carriage bolt back up such and then we start running our nut down like that you guys need a 10 millimeter wrench Probably all the tighter we need it. Now let's see if this thing will hold some air. Got just a little bit of a leak right there. Just crank it down a little more. Pretty sealed up. So we push the inner carriage bolt through and then we push the inner slug by turning it sideways and we slip it down through the damage. Now we've got all of that down in the tire assembly. We grab a hold of our cable here and we pull our carriage bolt up. We want to make sure this little plastic one, and that's what kind of lines 
the two slugs up together. So we want to make sure that we're lined up and we're over the damage that we're trying to repair. Then we just start and we tighten up the nut and the nut will sandwich our two slugs together. Again, I can't stress it enough. This is not something you're going to do and drive your vehicle down the road. This is just an off-road use only. Um, it's not designed for high pressure or anything like that. This is just going to allow you to air up your tire, get off the trail, maybe finish your day wheeling or something, but that's it. Um, we're not going to drive home on this. Okay guys, so we've been out wheeling, tore a valve stem off. Uh, what are we going to do? So normally, uh, it looks like our valve stem failed, it got ripped off. Well, as you can tell by looking at this, our replacement valve stem, it we have to dismount the tire, get that valve stem in from the outside and pull it through with a uh, valve stem installer, kind of like this. So we get it inside that rim, push it through the hole, hook in our valve stem, lubricate it up, and then we just give it a pull until it pops through. But who's got time for that? Um, that's not a fun trail repair to do. It's not fun breaking the bead on a tire off-road. It can be done, but there's got to be an easier way. And uh, the Colby valve, the emergency valve stem, it goes in from the outside and it expands. It's really simple, guys. This is how it works. You make sure that your whole valve stem's out of there. I would be doing, with this one, this is an emergency repair valve. Um, if I couldn't grab it with a pair of pliers within a few seconds to pull any remnants out, I would just push them inside the tire for now. And then I would take my Colby valve, I'd put a little lubricant on it. You probably don't have tire lube in your Jeep. Uh, spit on it, whatever. Uh, just a little something to kind of wetten it up, make it a little bit easier. It pushes down into the hole from the outside so we don't have to take the rim off. Now, we just start tightening up that wing nut. You guys, we're just gonna tighten it up with, we're not getting crazy, we're just gonna get firm finger pressure on it. Okay, looks good. Let's hit it with air and see what happens. Got some air in it. Let's see if this thing leaks. Alright, let's see if this thing leaks, guys. Got a little bit coming out of our core. Let's tighten that core up. Nothing. Put a valve stem on it, go wheeling, guys. That easy. A couple of seconds and you're back on the trail. It doesn't get any easier than that. We're not unbolting any wheels. We're not jacking anything up. It's totally safe. It works amazing. You guys should have this in every single one of your rigs. You should have it in your driver, too, and your tow rig. Um, works great on trailers and everything. Um, it's a pretty universal product. Really easy to use. You just saw it. We're done. Now when I get back to the shop and I can put this thing up on, have the guys put it up on a rack and, and, and change this tire out, totally safe, totally easy, not sweating at all. Um, you guys, you don't need tire machine for any of these repairs. I only have it set on here so I had a surface to hold it. These are all repairs that can be done on the vehicle, on the trail. Again, remember, sidewall slug and our plug are not repairs that we're going to want to use on the highway. Those are temporary repairs to get us back to the trailer, back to camp, or whatever. 
um, just to get you back to safety. Um, Colby valve, you can leave that in. You can keep driving on it. And uh, guys, I really appreciate you uh, watching the first of our series of uh, trail repairs. Uh, hopefully, if you guys have any issues with your tires uh, off-road, you'll have a little better idea. Uh, again, sidewall slugs, a tire repair kit, Colby emergency valve stem. These are the things that I recommend you have in your uh, in your arsenal of tools. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on the trail. Thanks for watching.